We've asked uh, various people about the uh, Arizona Wide Receiving Corps, yeah. how talented they are, comparing to other units that they've seen in the past. Brandon, what, what do you think of this group? Um, I, I really like how they've developed, um, you know, since they've uh, joined us. You know, Dorian got here two years ago, T Mac got here, um, and Jacob both got here in the spring. Um, they've really taken to the coaching, taken to, uh, you know, trying to learn our system. Um, so we're really pleased with their, where those guys are, and, and the guys coming up behind them, too, are, you know, they're pressing for, uh, to get in there, too. But um, those guys are uh, handling themselves really well right now. Johnny, you've seen really good receivers. USC and other places that you've been, how does this group compare to some of those? Oh, they're very similar. You know, these guys are playmakers, you know, very similar to those guys like Juju and all those kids are at, at, at SC. Um, you know, they have the, the ability to break any time, you know, they catch a football, so it's a special group. I think you were able to get 10 guys in on the line. Um, maybe not a lot of snaps, but a, a few. How do you think that group did, and do you, do you foresee that continuing? Yeah, most definitely. Moving forward, I would like to see more of those guys, you know, especially in the early situations. You know, it was good to see some of the guys play. Even the three snaps they were in there, it was really, really quality work. How was a guy like Ty Ty able to kind of work his way up and get some snaps? Uh, he's been going against our ones. You know, he's, he's like Jacob. You know, every time you turn on practice film, he's showing up. So we need to find a place for him, you know, and, and he's got a role now. So uh, I'm happy with, with where he's at. Long-term, do you see him as a tackle or an end? He can play both. Yep, yep. John, you talked last week about run fits and tackling the work you're doing in practice. After looking at the film, uh, what improvements did you see? How did you evaluate it? Um, I thought it was really good. You know, uh, the focus is, uh, you know, again, run fits every single day. You know, you, you, don't t you take it for granted sometimes that they know, but, um, you know, they got to continue to learn and understanding where their fits and where their help is coming from. So. Uh, you know, we're going to continue to do that this week. Oregon, I think, is first, maybe second in the Pac-12 in rushing. They rushed for 350 yards last week. What are the challenges that their offense presents to you? Oh, they're, they're a special group, man. They got good running backs that run downhill. You could tell they've been in the system. They understand how the system works. Um, you know, and they just continue to run the same plays, and they, you know, and they, they're good at it. So we got our, our work cut off, and we got to do a great job this week preparing our guys. And, um, and understand where the fit's going to come from. How do you balance patience with freshmen making mistakes versus you know, quality and production? Well, you know, it, the game of football is, is not perfect. You know what I mean? And for those guys, I think sometimes they learn from their mistakes. Uh, you know, and, and to put them in, that, in a game situation, it helps. You know, sometimes people think, you know, being on the sideline and watching film, Sometimes you don't really get to experience what you need to do in order to perform, you know, at the, at the highest level. Brandon, right, follow up with the wide receiver question. When you have a trio like that and a tight end that can catch the ball, how does it open up the playbook and allow you to do different things on offense? Uh, yeah, it causes a bunch of matchup problems. You know, it's tough to say, hey, we want to lock down one guy. Uh, so, you know, the, the defense just kind of has to, uh, you know, figure out how they want to defend it and who they want to cover and, you know, who they're willing to, you know, let go against, a, you know, their lesser coverage guy. So uh, we just got to find uh, our best matchups against, uh, you know, whatever defense we're going against. But it, it's tough when you got four guys and then you got Wiley coming out of the backfield, uh, and Jonah coming out of the backfield. Um, both those guys can catch great. And DJ's got great hands too. Um, so, you know, we're good. We like those matchups. How do you see a guy like Kean fitting into his new role? Um, he's he did great. That's glad. Uh, I'm really glad we got a chance to get him in, um, get him some more reps. Uh, he's just gonna keep getting better, just with the more reps he's he's getting. Um, he, he really wants to do it. He's a willing blocker, um, and you know we we know he can do special stuff when he gets the ball in his hands. Um, so this is a great opportunity for him to step up. You work with him on blocking stuff, or Pow Pow, or both of you? Yeah, it, mainly with Coach Pow Pow, but uh, yeah, we always like to get the tackles, tight ends together, and get works on combinations and, and whatever we can to, um, to get those ready, pass protection, all that stuff. So um, I don't throw him many balls, but I like Coach Pow to do that. Dan Lanning was the coordinator of the team that uh, won the national championship last year. He's brought that defense to Oregon. What are the things that pop out to you when you look at their, at their defense? Yeah, it, he's. Uh, I believe he's used to having uh, you know some pretty good players over there at Georgia, and he's got good players here at Oregon. So um, he's found way to found ways to utilize guys and put them in position to make plays. Um, so I you know expect nothing less than that this weekend. Um, a really talented group over there. Um, 
and uh, you know it's a great test for us. We're really excited about it. How many runs do you want to have per game, and, and what kind of productivity are you looking at versus putting up big chunk yardage? In it's a great year? question. It's the one that ends with W. So I, how, whatever the number is, it really doesn't matter to me. Um, if they're trying to take away something, it may be more passes. Um, you know, we, you can say that uh, you know, I want X number, but you know, we had 80 plays last week, or you know, we had 60 plays two weeks ago. So just stay balanced as best we can. Um, and I thought we did a pretty good job of that last week. Um, I think it wound up being 30 or to 40 or uh, who knows the numbers, but um, yeah, just balanced and make sure we're not giving away anything uh, scheme-wise. Johnny, uh, you used um, Isaiah Taylor and DJ Warnell at the free safety spot this past week. What's your assessment of how those guys did? I thought they played one of the best games, you know, for IT, you know, since he's been here. You know, they were very productive. They were very active. So, you know, I'm, I'm glad that they played. I'm comfortable with those guys playing in the game. So that, that's what they showed me. I DJ Warnell has played three different positions here. I think it was mostly that nickel in the spring. Yeah, he was that nickel. Has it been a matter of just kind of figuring out what to do with We're trying, him? You know, basically trying to put him on the field. You know what I mean? Trying to find a role for him. Uh, you know, so when we go to our base stuff, he was our backup Sam. And then, you know, if we're in our nickel, he's our regular, you know, um, free safety. And then, you know, that's what he's been playing. He started off in the spring at nickel, so it's good to know the overall scheme of things, you know what I mean? He's got a good uh, feel for it. There was a guy uh, that had a pretty large role on special teams and a little bit on defense last year, uh, Dante Smith. We haven't seen him out there this year. Is, is he injured or anything? Or? Uh, he's, he's here, you know, which is, you know, we're getting in situations where, you know, we're in tight ball games. I don't, you know, especially at the linebacker position, you don't sub those guys. You know, maybe you know, early in the season, but not right now. You guys, Brian, you guys had a fourth and goal at the one yard line and didn't really seem like you got a lot of push. What did you see on that play? What, what do you think needs to happen in a situation like that for to be successful? Yeah, unfortunately, it was kind of a, the team effort right there. We didn't all get the job done. Um, we could have got more push at the line, at the tight end spot from the back. Uh, Would have liked to, um, you know, just kind of pour it up in there. He was trying to look like he was. Um, you know, find the hole as opposed to just make a hole, um, and then the quarterback needs to carry those fake. We had a lot of errors on that one play right there, so I was really disappointed that we didn't get that in. Um, we need to. That's something we, you know, we would like to pride ourselves on is we get the goal to go. It's um, we know what's going to happen. When you get to the end of the game and there's about what's it, about four and a half minutes left or so, Jed said he's really paranoid about blowing leads, and he seemed like he wanted to keep the starters. And do you have discussions with him? At that point, about hey, I'd like to get my second team offensive line in, or hey, we should get the backup receivers in, or yeah, I mean, we, yes, we have a conversation about personnel um, often, um, but we are, you know, we're not ready to start putting in a bunch of other guys. We had one drive left; we want to finish the game. Um, those guys are playing their tails off. Um, let them finish. So, uh, you know, that may change at another time, but I, I was I was great with how we handled it. Um, Want to win the uh, take a knee at the end with the guys who got us there. So, uh, Hunter Eccles has more tackles for losses and sacks this season than he had in his entire USC career. What what is responsible for that? Is it just the role that he's in? Is it his growth, maturity? What do you think? Uh, I think he's comfortable with playing the defense because he's been you know at SC. It's the same defense. Uh, you know, I think he understands what the position has become, um, and then you know just he's. He's got so many, you know, game experience, and, and it's showing up. You know, his preparation is a lot better now than it was before. Um, you know, and, and for him to make that big of a play to end the game, that was big time. How has his role maybe benefited some of the younger guys? Oh, it's been awesome because he knows how we do things. You know, how we prepare our guys. You know, the, the verb is just happening in in meetings and things like that. So it's been really good. Nice. For both of you. Uh, you're getting to the tough part of the season where you're going up against a bunch of teams that are top 25. Any conversation with the team about staying focused at the one and not getting caught up in this meat grinder? Uh, I think we're embracing it. You know, uh, the, these are opportunities that you come to your Arizona and for coaches and players. You know, I think you got to be excited for for this game and, and the other games moving forward. You know, these are big time games and you got to be ready to play. This is why you came here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's really been the messaging 
it hasn't changed. All these are championship opportunities, right? We're trying to win the Pac-12, and you got to win all these games if you want to have a chance to do that. So um, we've been treating them the same all the way through, so this isn't really any different for us, I would hope. For John, it seemed like CY was more aggressive in this game, uh, really getting involved and, and stopping the run. Um, what did you see out of him? Was there, did you talk to him about Again, that? Again, with all our guys, I think the way they prepare, they knew exactly what was coming. That's why they triggered so much now. And we've been harping on the corners and the safety to show up more in the run game. And that's been the message moving forward, even today. You know, we got to have their support this week because they really have a good running game. Is it hard to play that position now, safety, because maybe you're worried about the targeting? He almost got a targeting accidentally. I think he had kind of a violent looking tackle there. How do you kind of coach guys to, to toe that line between? Uh, you know, we just tell them, just be smart, you know what I mean? Tack with your face, you know what I mean? And not put your helmet down, you know, but I'm not going to slow him. You know, I like the, the way he's being aggressive the last couple of weeks. Has coaching changed? So for people that grew up playing the game one certain stop, it's almost like we're at that point where we stop the helmet to helmet contact. Have you noticed the younger players playing a different style than maybe somebody did five, six years ago because they were taught differently? Oh, there's no doubt. There's no doubt. And we, that's why we preach it, you know, in meetings and at practice, you know, how to tackle. Because the game has changed, you know, in the last five years, the way you tackle, you know what I mean? And every little thing's been called now. So we got to do a great job of teaching our guys how to tackle. So, um, yeah, but I agree, you know, it's, it's totally changing the game. What was the line generationally from the old school, we're going to go helmet to helmet to where we are today? <laughs> I think the last five years, really. You know, uh, you know, and it's for the safeties, and we get it. But at the same time, you know, it's it's hard. You know, it's a hard thing to coach. Yeah, I grew up tackling like Chuck Cecil, so that's that's changed dramatically. So that used to be the good thing to do, tackle like Chuck. <laughs> um, but um, no, it's it's changed a lot. It's for player safety. It's for the betterment of the sport to keep guys on the field more. Um, but there is some things you got to adjust and you got to you got to be able to handle and uh, you got to keep your head out of the hit, especially on the quarterback, because they're going to be sensitive about those calls and um, rightfully so. It's player, that that player would be safety. a great question for Chuck. <laughs> See how he feels. <laughs> yeah, he'd have an interesting answer too. Brennan, what do you remember about that last week of T Max recruitment? Um, let's see. What. Uh, I think I might have been in Hawaii. I, uh, we were down. Oh, like kind of. Yeah. When did when did that happen? That was uh, he was yeah. a Fe he was a February yeah. signing or was he a December, December guy? Right? He was in December. Yeah. I we were. Um, yeah. It was it was kind of wild. I think there were some coaching changes going on, um, um, and we just stayed vigil. Our, our messaging never changed uh, with him. It was just kind of the same plan. It's kind of the plan you see going forward. Um, so. I can't remember any particular stories where it, where it kind of changed, but it was, you know, we'd stayed the same throughout, and I think that's why, you know, ultimately um, it turned the way it did in the end, you know, because we were the same guys. So, and we had the same messaging and the, and the same pitch, and the, um, and it seems to be working out and coming true, kind of like we thought it would. So, um, that being said, the kid's still got um, a, a lot of growth to do. Like he's, he's playing great, but. This isn't the top end. When a player of T Max caliber eventually signs with your program, what's kind of the, the coach's reaction? Oh, when we sign anybody, we're excited about it. Like we love adding guys to this program. Um, you know, one of the things we're talking to some uh, recruits' parents uh, this weekend is um, we're just really excited to get the kids that we're getting into this program because they love being here. They love competing. Um, they're just ball players and. They love being a part of this thing. Um, I'm really excited just about our team in general, about how we're celebrating each other. Um, we're having fun playing a game, um, and we're all on the same mission right now. So I'm um, just really excited where our team is um, in that aspect. Johnny, how can the crowd maybe help you out? Oh, Sorry. it's going to be huge. And if you guys are listening, we need your help. Yeah, it's going to be huge. Show up, show out. That's right. Zona Zoo, where you at? All right, that's okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you guys. Appreciate you guys. See you guys.